guys. Hello. Uh, welcome to our second broadcast of the day. We're here with Casey Love. Hello, everyone. Uh, and as promised, we're going to do a series of interviews with some incredible artists here at Son of Monster Palooza in Burbank, California on Sunday, October, two, two, October 13th? Yeah. 2013. Um, before we get into the actual conversation, we're going to test the links to make sure they all go to this, and then we're going to launch uh, this live broadcast. But while we're vamping a little bit and inviting you in, we're going to get Casey to tell you a little bit about the art he brought, and I'm going to launch the Facebook post. There you go. Who's, who's this guy? This is a new piece I just did this year for this show called Chupacabra. And uh, started as kind of a werewolf design. Are we off? Can you hear me? Started as kind of a werewolf design, uh, but then I wanted to do something that was a little different and uh, ended up sort of feeling more chupacabra to me than, than actually uh, just a standard werewolf. So this is a new piece I just did, just finished for the show. It's a latex cast. Teeth are made out of a Go ahead. material called Primo. Um, you know, I design, sculpt, paint, cast, seam, everything myself. Hair work is done by my beautiful wife. She does all punching, so it's pretty cool. Uh, this is a new piece, one of the new pieces for this year. There's six new pieces I've done, um, but this Aaron. is one of my favorites. What do you need? Okay. So. Great. I just double checked all the social links, and everything is working. Uh, all the links are working, so. A lot of you are just getting this uh, invitation now on our Facebook wall and our Google Plus page and our Twitter feed. So come on in and join us. If you're just joining us right now, we're live at Son of Monster Palooza with the great Casey Love. Uh, Hello. One of, one of Hollywood's top creature designers and a beloved Stan Winston School instructor. We've done a lot of lessons with Casey and we have a lot more to do. A lot more. Um, and we're going to be talking to a bunch of monster makers here uh, for the next two hours, totally live. This is not about us talking at you, it's about you talking to us. So write your questions in the comments and we will answer them as they come in. And Chris, are you able to monitor questions? Excellent. Awesome. Um, so Casey, tell us what you're, what you're promoting uh, at this show. At this show, this show for me is really about the personal art that I want to do. It has really nothing to do with special effects films or anything like that. It's more me getting my personal outlet out, my creations, my designs, and I love to just come up with stuff that pushes the level of what mass making started as, which is a novelty item, such as the Great Don Post and other uh, companies like Distortions Unlimited. You know, there's been this whole rise and level of artists that do masks, but at a very high level and as a piece of art. And I'm one of the guys, there's, there's a few of them out there, uh, great sculptors and designers, and we love to really push the level of it to an art form and, and for those that appreciate that and try to uh, just show the best art that we can. So for October, a uh, show like this, I'm a little more laid back and a little more fun, whereas like the April show, I'll push the level a bit more and be a little more uh, crazy with the designs. Well, you're, uh, for those of us who know Casey, this man is notorious for banging out a, an enormous amount of artwork leading up to the show. <laughs> and everyone's like, it's crazy. many people bring one or two pieces. Casey will bring 10 new pieces, and they're not little. They're like big. I mean, we're going to talk about your links, actually. Why don't yeah. we just say that right now? If you want to just get a quick look at Casey's work, tell them where they can find it. Well, there's on my Facebook, of course, which is uh, if you're a fan or whatever, you, you know, you can see the work, especially the new work that we're posting today. Of course, my website, which we have a brand new site coming after this show, which is www.caseylovedesigns.com. Um, and after this show, I'll be linking up to Twitter, Instagram, all of those kinds of things um, with everybody and joining in and sharing work. So there's going to be a lot more coming and I'll be doing a lot more with the Stan Winston crew, classes like you said, teaching both online and videos. We want to do more of that. So there's a lot more to come. I know awesome. we've talked about a lot of great ideas. This guy's uh, got <laughs> the d deepest well of imagination. He's, uh, this is the new character this year, Purple uh, People Eater, which yeah. is actually up on our Facebook page. 
is unbelievable. Um, I yep. wish I could just take you over to his booth and show you everything he brought. <laughs> uh, but please uh, like Casey on Facebook, yes. follow him. Any questions for Casey? Any of you guys have seen his tutorials on the Stan Winston School site or just have followed him? This is an opportunity to say hey uh, and to talk to him about creature effects. Um, I'm going to step off just for a second. I would like for you to show uh, those who are just joining us the piece you brought today. Sure. And I want to make sure uh, they get to see it. Okay, I'll tell them, you know, I'll go over it once again. So this is one of the new pieces for this show. It's called Chupacabra, and uh, it's kind of an anguish mask, I call it. It's got that squinty feeling to it, really tiny, Jeez. tiny eyes. Um, you know, the original sculpt was done in wet clay, uh, probably over about a week uh, or so, you know. Um, and then, of course, uh, the mold was a two-piece Ultra Cal mold. Uh, cast in latex, just slip cast latex, really thick. And uh, the, the latex of choice that I use these days is uh, from Monster Makers. It's a uh, uh, RD407 uh, latex. Uh, I love the, the latex that they produce. Arnold Goldman produces that stuff over there. And um, the teeth you see in here are just inserted separate teeth that I actually sculpt by hand for each mask individually. Um, there's not a mold for those. They're just separate insert teeth, and they're done out of a material called Primo. They have a nice translucency to them. You, you, you mold them or you, you know, with your hands. You can sculpt them and then bake them and then insert them. So um, this is one of my newest creations and uh, one that I'm really proud of. It's got a nice fleshy realism to it, a lot of veins subtly in the head and stuff. It's just really cool. All, all right, uh, Casey, we have some questions coming in. I'm going to ask you. Cool. Uh, the first one is from White Lion 44. You've been with us all day. Um, right on. Cool. Uh, Casey, do you have a favorite type of creature to sculpt? Ah, yeah. I think my favorite stuff starts to be anything that's mixed with some sort of naturistic animal, or you know, something. Uh, anytime I can incorporate human together with nature somehow because I, I often look at nature as most of my inspiration these days. Anytime I can come up with a great new version of a character that, that those two things get uh, slammed together in an interesting way, that tends to be my favorite kind of stuff. Of course, I have genre stuff that I'm really proud of that I do, which is like, you know, the, some, a lot of artists love HP Lovecraft style stuff. So I always love to visit that kind of a thing and try to come up with something new and unique. And so uh, there's a lot of different levels. I love sci-fi stuff. I love horror stuff. I love fantasy. You know, last year. So everything. Yeah, last year, Monster Palooza, my whole table he loves was. to sculpt everything. That's yeah, the answer. My whole table was uh, <laughs> fantasy, the whole table. So this it time. It seems like yeah. you get into, like, yeah. like any artist, you get into a groove with a certain yeah, you know, I, type of look or a creature type and just explore that yeah, when until I get, you get bored. Yeah, when I get locked into something, I just yeah. I, I don't stop until it's I'm done and then it's and then it's move on to the next thing. Right. You know? <laughs> so. All right, we have questions coming in. I've got my YouTube. I'm not checking my uh, email here. I'm actually tracking your comments. Uh, okay, so we have a question here from our auto. Ooh, ooh. Monkeys Must Die, who's been with us for days, it seems. <laughs> Monkeys Must Die? Matt, you should know that most of these talented people, Steve Wang, Kyoto's, Casey, and others, are all active in the Garage Kid hobby. Yes, we do know this. Can we ask them about it? Let's talk about Garage Kids. All right, sure. Um, I love those. I, of course, at, uh, got in heavily into that scene and uh, doing those. I enjoy sculpting in smaller scale, full figures and stuff. So, I mean, it's just another uh, kind of hobby for me that becomes fun. It's not really one of the things I do to make too, too much of a living, but it's definitely something I really enjoy. And obviously, it comes from the Aurora kit days and, yeah. you know, as a kid and growing up with that kind of stuff and, and loving monsters. And it's just a, another form of that. Of course, I tend to focus the realism or, or, you know, the, the sorry, not realism, but the, the, um, the original kind of kits rather than sculpt Frankenstein over and over and things like that. that is, I've always been known as the, doing the original kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I love all of it. I'm a big fan of the classic horror monsters and everything across the board. Yeah. You know, it's funny is so many artists who are at the top of their game making a living in this business still do garage kits. John Rosengrant, yeah. uh, my, one of my dad's right hands for 25 years, still... You know, he's running Legacy Effects now. He still does his military kits. Yeah, he's a master of military, master. yeah. And Ken Cornett, the fabricator there, still does model cars. And it's where everyone started. So I think it, 
kind of, uh, I don't know, you always well, love it. Well, I, I also look at it like this, uh, even though it's not a, a, a huge money maker per se, the one great thing about garage kits, and here comes Simon Lee, who's another great sculptor, the great thing to do is to branch yourself out as an artist. So the reason I, if you look at what I do, I don't just do one thing like special effects makeup. I also do garage kits. I also do the high-end masks. I also work sometimes for Sideshow, who's right behind us here, doing paint work for those guys. It's a wonderful company to work with. I, I branch myself out so that I can draw from as many uh, things as I can. I even teach. So the more that you can develop yourself as an artist, well-rounded that way, and draw from those things, the better you know living you can kind of make. And, and right. if something dries up, you have something else you can go on to. Be diverse as an artist. Yes, Absolutely. exactly, exactly. Um, we have some more questions here I want to get to. Uh, Steve Greenaway asks, Casey, how many hours of sculpture skills does an entry-level person need to be considered competent? Can you put an hour <sighs> count on that? I don't one think so. One million. No. It uh, might take someone <laughs> one million. It might take uh, someone one hundred. Yes. The, the, more, the, the more dedication you have, I've seen guys come along in the beginning that nobody knew about, and then uh, three years later, they're a giant name, you know, uh, out of nowhere. It's, and all that person did was, was sculpt, 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 sculpt their butt off. And, and, and that's really what it takes. If you're dedicated, the dedicated ones will become more successful and you'll see them improve like vastly. And there's so much information out there now that back when I started, and other guys started even earlier, there was less and less. So it became a longer process of learning and grasping things. Now you've got so much, you've got this kind of thing going on with the schools, the live classes. There's just so many ways, but it, do, it does boil down to that artist really studying and getting a grasp on anatomy, character, all those things to develop their skills into to being a great sculptor. Uh, and uh, the, the number one thing is there are no shortcuts. No. Uh, a lot of young people uh, don't take that into account. Right. To master any craft, no yeah. matter what it is, is about a 10-year journey. Minimum, yeah, to minimum. master a craft. Yes, um, at least. And most of the masters I know are continually learning new techniques, and they never stop learning. Well, I, on this specific piece here, I learned stuff that I, I, you know, I improve on things. Uh, I've, I have a devil head here. I improved on that in the anatomy. There's each piece I do, and every time I try to improve and, I, and my skills, and I'm always improving. So that should tell a new younger artist the same thing. Like they're going to have a lot of improvement to do. You know, you shouldn't really stop uh, that kind of thing. All right, we have a whole bunch of questions coming in, and then we're going to have to wrap it up. Cool, cool. We got our next interview coming up. All um, right. I think this is a good one to go out on. Um, and before we go out on this question with Casey, please make sure to like him on Facebook. Just Casey Love. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, and guys. Casey Love Designs. Check out his website. This man is one of our yes. favorites yep. in town. He's a brilliant artist, and you'll see a lot of great stuff from him. Just like him on all his channels. All right, here's the question. Uh, I don't have it up yet. I'm good. Final it's coming. question. Do you have some fantastic... This is from Heather Burroughs. Uh, hey, Heather, you've been with us all day, too. Do you have some fantastical dream sculpt in your head that you would love to do but haven't had the opportunity to do yet? What's your ultimate dream project? You know, that's a tough question because it seems like whenever I approach a show like this where I get to do my own thing out of my head, uh, it, designs change, ideas change. I, you know, with my wife and I, we discuss things sometimes, throw things back and forth at each other. It really is like until I know what I'm going after, I almost don't know. And and there's always out of each show comes that one piece that's kind of that that piece that you're asking me about. So you're gonna cop out so and you're not gonna answer I, the question. I, I don't really have an answer for Come it. Come on, I don't. man, make it up. <laughs> there's not one character. What's your ultimate dream character? I don't know. <laughs> make it up, dude. Seriously. <laughs> Uh, Squidular. No, I don't know. Squidular. <laughs> Look for Squidular next from Casey Love. No, I, I yeah, Thank I don't you, know. Brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We'll no let you problem. get back to your no awesome problem. booth. Awesome. Thanks Thank again, you. man. Thanks, everybody. We're going to transfer your cool. headset on over to si I, I, Simon actually, next. No, because he's, uh, Steve's up next and then Simon will be up. You guys will come up next. We are now being joined uh, by Mio and Steve. And they're going to talk to you about uh, an incredible new line they're working on together. And Steve Wang, I think you all know this guy. He's been around for a little while. You've done a few things. 
Um, let's put a headset on you. Headset or do you want this? Oh, you, oh. Uh, we'll, we'll have a microphone too. Um, keep the comments coming in, guys. I know it must, must look weird for me to be looking at my phone. I'm just looking at your comments. Um, I'm not being rude. All right, I'm refreshing right. now. Yes, we are sir. here with Steve Wang. This man is a legend in this town. He is one of the true groundbreaking artists of Creature Effects. He has created a style um, that people even call a Steve Wang approach. And when people emulate your approach, you know you've arrived. Uh, my father, Stan Winston, saw that in him uh, many moons ago yes. on uh, it was first the very first job was invaders from invaders mars. from mars and then uh then came predator or was no, the one then in between a year later it came back and i worked on monster squad monster squad and of then course predator right that's after right that. the monster squad the incredible gill man uh paint job that steve did that blew my dad away and blew everyone in the shop away no one was doing that and then predator uh, uh dad gave this man pretty much free reign on a paint scheme Steve pitched him some stuff, and Steve ran with it and created uh, an iconic look that is still to this day incredible. What's going on here at Monster Palooza, dude? Well, I'm here promoting my new line of collectibles. Let's talk about I it. Have a, I have a new company called Elite Creature Collectibles. Uh, I have two partners. One of my partners is George Sohn from Toynami and Cinema Cat, which a lot of collectors in the business know. And then another, another partner named uh, Jason Zhu from China, mm -hmm. and he's one of our financiers. So I know you've been in the collectibles industry as a sculptor for a while. Why the push to, by the way, I think it's very cool that you have your own line. Yeah. It's about time. And Thank I know you. you've had your own line of masks yeah. and such in yeah. the back, but what encouraged the push right now for um, you? Well, you know, I've had people push uh, me to do this for a long time, and I never really was interested because it was so complicated to do it. It's not just about the artistic skill to do it. You have to have somebody who can get the licensing, the whole mm -hmm. business side of things, and then you also have to have a distribution chain lined up. And so when I found the right partners who were willing to do this, then they say, hey, let's do this together. So that's when it all made sense. And um, where, is there anything online? I know you have the pieces in your booth over there, but is there a place online right now where our viewers can take a look right now? Yeah, yeah, just go work? to uh, EliteCreatures.com. EliteCreature.com, is yeah. that the Facebook as yeah. well? Yeah, EliteCreatures.com, and we have a Elite Creature Collectible Facebook page as well. Very cool. So then go on and, and see I the know new. you've had some help in this endeavor. Yes. So I think we should bring someone in here. Yes. Mio. 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 And I'm going to step out Come on in. because I want you guys to meet Mio, and I also want you to start asking questions. Uh, after you meet Mio, so Steve can have a little Q&A with you guys. So, Mio, come on in. Come on in. Set that down. Sorry, pardon my fingers. All right. Test, test. Hi. Okay, they can hear you. Good. Okay. And you can just set that on the table. Oh. Yep. This is Mio Nakamura. She's a uh, one of my main sculptors in my shop, and uh, this is she brought some of her work here to show. This is the original art piece that she designed called Narissa. Maybe you want to explain this character. Uh, it was um, originally actually inspired from Ge Greg Simpkins' artwork. He does a lot of paintings and. Um, yeah, it was just a personal piece that I wanted to do. I don't really have a story. <laughs> and then she also did these little baby dragons. Maybe you can show this. Yeah. Um, can you guys see this? <laughs> these are her original design sculptures. And she has a series of five of these so far. Four. Four? four? Yeah, four. and there's going to be more. Yeah. So can you guys see? Very cute. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> So Mio has worked with me uh, at Elite Creature Collectibles. We have, our first line is the Blade the franchise. And uh, we've done two life-size busts of the movie Reaper and the Drake uh, character. And then we have a, a placard called Transformation Placard, which has, it shows four different faces of the Reapers uh, as it transforms. And then the last piece that we did is a one-third scale Reaper maquette, which Mio sculpted for the company. Mm. <laughs> and that one's been getting a lot of uh, positive feedback, and people seem to love it a lot, so. That's it. 
I'm just standing here. Hi, everyone. It's freaking out to see you, Steve. First of all, and you, Mio. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Nice creature there. They really love that creature. And ML Garn, what's your question? Bring it. And everyone who wants to talk about the Gilman kit that you've created. Do you remember the Gilman kit? I've done several. Do they know which one in particular? <laughs> um, yeah, can you find out which one in particular? I guess it, they're not specifying, but do uh, you want to tell about your favorite one that you work on? Uh, well, Cinemaquette. Yeah, I mean, my newest one that's coming out is the Creature from the Black Lagoon from Cinemaquette. That one is uh, actually, I think, is shipping this month. And it's a one-third scale replica of the original creature, which is my favorite monster of all time. And uh, so it was a, a nice opportunity for me to be able to recreate him, and uh, it's a passion project, because I had a mishap with it early on with a, a sculpture where it was finished, they were getting ready to mold it, and we had an accident and it melted. So I had to start over again, and each time I did it, it took me two months to sculpt. So this new incarnation, I'm very proud of, and it's uh, my homage to the original creators of the creature. So look for it. It's coming out this month. Yeah, it's, it's scheduled to, uh, to uh, be delivered this month. Uh, Steve's got another question for you. Yep. Uh, Mr. Laserblade says, Hey Steve, your work is an inspiration for my creatures. I love to work in the Guyver Palace. How was it taking something from an anime series like Guyver and translating it to a movie? Oh, it was a great experience. Um, I was a big fan of the Guyver before I even knew about the film that we we're going to do. So when I finally got approached to, to co-direct it with Scream at George the first time, uh, we had talked about creating this thing or, or reimagining it for uh, the movie world. The original design was really amazing. You know, it was very insect looking and it worked great for animation. But I thought for us to do something in a movie format, maybe we should sort of take it to another level. Um, so, so the idea that I had was, you know, let's make this an organic armor. Maybe it could look like skeletal bones in, in its texture, but still keep it in the, the design of the original uh, anime character. And then in the animation, he had all these cords on his body. They were just kind of going across his arm and his, his body. And I thought it'd be kind of cool if we were to take those and make it look more like muscle striation. So to give it some sort of recognizable anatomy. So that was the approach that I took when I uh, rebooted that character, so to speak, reimagined it. And uh, it actually was very popular. The, the original creator of the Giver, Yoshiki Takaya, loved it, the new treatment for it. And uh, even in Japan, the, a lot of the artists there like uh, Takeya, who's an amazing artist, they all ended up sort of doing their own takes of this, this style, so it worked out very well. Hey, uh, Steve? Yep. Okay. Um, it's about your, your design process. Uh, do you start with sketches, then small and then work your way up, or do you ever just go for uh, it? All, you know, I, I think I've done all three styles. It really just kind of depends. I think first and foremost, especially when I'm working in a movie, what I do is I read the script first and figure out what is necessary, uh, the requirements of this character, whether it's an aquatic character, you know, if it's a mammal, is there anything, any kind of clues that we can get from the director. And if he doesn't have any idea, then we just we start to pitch him ideas. But a lot of times we start with sketches um, first and then we go into maquettes so that we can work out proportional problems, we can work out, uh, give the director an image that they can actually look at through a lens and kind of try to visualize what this thing might look like in the movie. Uh, now, with the digital technology uh, being more available, we now do a lot of this digitally now. So we'll do paintings, we'll do ZBrush models that we can rotate around. And uh, so essentially it's the same, same reasons except just different technologies. Okay, uh, Stephen, there's, there's a few actually important first steps. Uh, one of the most important first steps that I discuss with the director is, does this design work in the world, in the story that you're trying to tell? Because um, a lot of times I've seen movies where they'll do a creature, you know, this thing's supposed to be, let's say, out in the snow or out in the water, 
and then design something that doesn't look like it could survive in the environment or look natural in the environment. So the first question I was asked the director is, does this creature or you know this character work in this this world, the environment that you're trying to create? You know, uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, is this thing believable? You know, it's so easy to just go Yahoo and just throw a bunch of colors and shapes and whatnot and create something completely crazy, but if it's not believable, you're sort of doing the film with the service. So there's a lot of discussions that we have about, you know, these things I'll bring up to the director and we talk about the aesthetics and talk about the practical nature of what we're creating. All right, um, Steve, we're going to let you get back, but I would love for you and Neo to remind everyone watching about what you guys are here to promote and the links within the Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, actually, let Mio go first. Talk about where. Just a quick shout out. Um, this is painted by Gary Tenacliffe. So. Um, we love Gary. Gary's I know. awesome. He's awesome. He's in the dark. So. Yay. Thank you, thank you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, can I guess I have a Facebook page. Tell us. <laughs> and Instagram. Yeah. Tell us yes, Instagram. Instagram. I'm Quirky Monster. So if you guys want to want to check me out. I'm just starting that up recently, so I'm going to try to put more of my work on there. So. Yeah, and this will be available to, to buy, not this piece, but she'll be putting out kits of this and also the, the dragons in both form, in the finished art form and also in the kits. So they'll be available. Look her up in this website, and as they become available, you can be able to buy it. And then what I'm doing is, uh, my, my line is called Elite Creature Collectibles. That's the company. And it's EliteCreatures.com. That's our website. We also have a Facebook page called the Elite Creature Collectibles. You can go to and, and uh, like us and then just see what's coming up. We give you all the, the latest news. And our first license is Blade. And we're starting to ship everything starting next month. But we're going to have a lot of new, uh, new licenses coming up this next year. So just look for us. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. And thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. I'm going to hope they forget the sculpture and just leave it here with us. No, no, you can take it. Check out their links. We have uh, another guest standing here, ready to come in. Come on in, Simon. Uh, we have another brilliant artist, uh, concept designer, creature sculptor, Simon Lee. Uh, Simon's work is ridiculous. <laughs> As you, in a good way. Let me go behind um, and he has an amazing story, his life story and how he got here are Thank really cool. Um, and yeah, every year it. Simon shows up. Usually, you know, a lot of people put together a massive booth with lots of stuff going on. Simon usually brings one sculptural experience and they never fail to get people stopping. So, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. It's great to have you. Uh, Good to be here. Tell us about this creation and what you're doing at Monster Palooza this year. Well, I'm just here uh, uh, just to keep up the process because I teach a uh, teach a class in my studio and uh, I have a lot of local students. So um, every year I try to come by and just um, uh, showcase my work and just reach out and talk to people, uh, meet new friends. You know, uh, this piece is pretty much a, a standard. Zoom um, in tight on the piece, Jake, and let's yeah. let's talk about it. Well, this, this is pretty much, you know, with some of the, the stuff that I do normally, you know, in my line of work. I'm a concept designer, uh, do mostly stuff for films. Um, but anytime, you know, people approach me, they'll, you know, hand me the script or tell me the specifications of the, uh, the characters that I'm working on. And, uh, and I'll create something like this. Um, usually on my team, we'll have uh, a lot of illustrators, um, you know, it's a concept design team, and uh, I'm one of the uh, concept sculptors. So what I'll do is I will uh, design the creature in clay directly on the spot. Um, and this is the type of stuff that I would normally do. Uh, yeah. Steve, we have a lot of people very excited you're here. Uh, we have, let's see. <laughs> Uh, no, did I? Would I say Steve? I'm sorry. Do you know how many interviews I've done today? This guy, Simon. No, a bunch of people. Simon Lee. Woohoo! Spider Zero. Yes. Uh, awesome! Holy shit! It's Simon. <laughs> Simon. Woohoo! So everyone's very excited to see you. And if you don't know this man's work, tell them where to find you on Facebook and your website URL. 
well, and can, Instagram and everywhere else. Yeah, you can you can find my work on my website, uh, uh, bigbluetree.com. And uh, you know, if you if you Google Don. Simon Leo Spider Zero, you know, my website or Facebook will come up. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember my Facebook, but the link to my Facebook. You have to remember your Facebook. It's on, but if they go to your website, they'll see yes, a yes, link if to your they Facebook. Go to the website, they'll they'll get there. Yes. And uh, encourage all of you to go look at his work. Um, and I, I would love for any questions you have for this man about sculpture. We only have a little bit of time with he him here. I, I want to just can you tell your story a little bit, just to how you came oh. to this? Because <laughs> a lot of you out there ask or say, I'm 40, <laughs> I, is it too late for me? Or I didn't get into creatures till I was 30, this is, this is impossible. This man is proof that it's never too late to make monsters. <laughs> so can you go ahead and tell your story, sure, Simon? Sure, sure. My, my, you know, my story, and uh, my becoming as a concept artist has been, is, has been very unorthodox. Uh, I, I started sculpting when I was around three, but mostly as a, I've been sculpting, you know, since I was three years old, but mostly as a hobby. So, um, but I actually went to business school, and then after I graduated, I, I, I built websites for 10 years. And I think by the time when I was 39 or 40, um, just by accident, I stumbled onto, you know, uh, model kits, you know. Uh, I've always enjoyed model kits, um, but around that time, you know, 30, 39 or 40, uh, I started selling model kits online, and all of a sudden, I, I'm getting all these. I started getting a lot of response. Oh. Technical difficulties. Uh, so, um, so around that time, you know, I started, I started selling, uh, I started selling model kits online. And then, two years later, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue this thing full time instead. So I, I, I quit my, uh, my old job, shut down my company. Uh, I started doing uh, sculpture full time, and uh, it's actually at this particular show, Monster Palooza, I met uh, Guillermo del Toro, and uh, uh, he invited me to his uh, on his concept team for Pacific Rim, and that was back in the early uh, 2011. And that's when I started uh, working in movies, and I've been working, um, you know, doing this line of work, you know, nonstop for the past three years. So that's been quite an experience. Um, let me steal this for one second. Sure. And the reason Simon is an instructor for us is because he showed up to a show, he brought his art, we said, wow, and that's how it works. So if you are an artist, the first step to making it a profession is to share it. That's how you do it, and it's very inspiring, your story. Take your glasses um, there's a few comments I want to read to you because people are loving you. Uh, Simon, Stephen Bono says, Simon, amazing man. Put it back on, man. Uh, we have people wanting your studio link. Uh, that would be bigbluetree.com? Yes, correct. That's bigbluetree.com. That is my, uh, my web website. You know, all of my, you know, my personal work is up there, and then there's information about my classes, you know, how to contact me and all that. Awesome. Here's some more love. Yes. Matthew Walther says, that is freaking spectacular. <laughs> uh, Killian Gonzalez says, I'm insanely in love with the style of his sculptures, very slim and elegant. There's a, there, elegant is a great word to apply to your work. Uh, Drexus Primetime, simply amazing. Christopher Harold wishes he could sculpt like you. Death Becomes You says, buy Simon's tutorial on Stan Winston School. Thanks, Death. <laughs> it is a great sculpture. We, we have an incredible uh, tutorial from him on our site. It's dynamic character sculpting. Um, <laughs> there, more to come. There's definitely uh, more to come. How to sculpt dynamic uh, Walter Amaro says, great to know that I still have time. Of course. Uh, it's never too late. Isaac Martinez says, Mr. Lee, Lee, big fan of yours. I have always wondered, how do you get your sculptures to have such great and unique texture? Uh, texture, I mean, is, uh, for me, honestly, it's all about getting to know your, the material, the medium that you're working with. Uh, because you, once you know it, once you know how to control it, and then you know you you should be able to, to replicate it. Um, I mean, you know, at, at the school at Stan Winston, you know, School of Character Arts, we have a you know huge library of, of useful resources, and they're, they're they're masters, you know, all across the board. 
you know, there, uh, there are tons of information where you can get on how to create stuff like this. What I specialize in is actually uh, creating concepts, creating, you know, dynamic uh, storytelling scenes. Um, but, um, you know, in terms of doing texturing and all that kind of stuff, uh, for me, well, you know, what it really boils down to it is getting to know the medium, getting to know your tools and how to control the process, and you will be able to, to pretty much replicate anything that you see in nature. Uh, well, thank you so much, Simon. I, I want to just give you a few more shout outs and then we'll retell everyone where to find you. Sure. And then we're going to move on to our next interview right. here in the booth. Um, Heather Burroughs says, I uh, feel that your designs are very distinctive and I love the insane amount of detail. Do you have a particular inspiration you keep in mind or do you try to draw inspiration from many areas depending on what it is you're creating? Well, I do try to draw my inspiration from many areas because um, cause one thing I, I always teach, you know, teach in my class, you know, try to communicate to my students that, is that you have, to, you have to know the rules before you can break the rules. What I mean by that is you have to be able to master anatomy well um, and get to know the material they're working with, get to know your tools. Once you know that process, you can use them in a number of creative ways and, and the combination is, is literally limitless. So kids, no shortcuts. You have to learn your foundational skills. Sorry. Then you can break them. Uh, to get... <laughs> Just a moment. Uh, everyone asks, uh, do you have to learn the foundational stuff? And Simon just said it. You have to know anatomy. You have to know how to sculpt before you can go nuts and do stuff like this. So start, take baby steps, and then you can fly. Yes, right? keep, work, keep working hard and, you know, and then uh, be flexible in your approach. You know, don't just try one formula and expect it to work all the time. If, if you're not producing results, try something different, you know, because for the last three years, I've, I must have sculpted more than 500 pieces. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm still growing, I'm still learning, but it is a never-ending never -ending process. But if you're willing to put in the work and... Uh, but always, always keep in mind to stay flexible, you know, and try to modify your approach, and then eventually, you know, something will, will happen. Will click. Yes. But persistence is key. For um, sure. Well, thanks. Give a final shout out to all the places our viewers can find you. Sure. And then we'll let you get back to your booth. All right. Um, you can find my work again at uh, www.bigbluetree.com, and you can Google Simon Lee or Spider Zero to be able to find my work. Thanks again for having Please me. Please follow this man. He is really a genius, as you can see. This is the tip of the iceberg. Thank All you right. for joining Thanks, us. Matt. Thanks again. All right. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, a legendary man. Uh, his name is Don Post. This man's name is synonymous with Halloween and monster masks. This was the first man to take the Halloween industry and pump it up a few notches and put out uh, deluxe monster masks and he's been across the way from us and I'd like to invite him to join us. Um, what's that? Who's next? Uh, hold on, who's next? Uh, come on in Don, come on in. Um, let, let's go get Jordu. Jordu Shell will be next. Uh, how are you? Hi, good to see you. It was great to meet you yeah. on, fr on uh, Friday when That's we were right. setting up. First time we've met. And uh, you know obviously any creature kid worth his salt knows your name, knows your masks, and to see you across from us was awesome. Um, so tell us about why you're here, uh, why at Palooza, what you guys are announcing here, and the whole oh, deal. Well, uh, what I'm doing here is uh, we brought some masks from a, a famous Monsters ad from October of 1977, and just as a... Uh, tribute to that time and uh, so we brought those masks here and um, we're showing them off and um, just I just love the atmosphere of being here and I'm glad to be here what is it about uh, monster fans that is so cool I, I agree with you like this is they're monster people, so you'd think they're horrible and they kill and they just stalk, but they don't. They're monster people are the coolest people. Well, you know, a <laughs> lot of times when, uh, especially selling at retail, people meet me and they say, you know, I expected you to be a little more sinister and, 
and have tattoos and piercings and everything, and they just find out that I'm just a regular guy off the street. It was the same with my dad. You know, yeah. in his uh, home life, he was just kind of Mr. Cleaver. Yeah, and then you go to the shop and guy. create horrible things. <laughs> but right. uh, most monster people I know are the same way. Just, uh, That's right. Yeah. They work out all the freakishness in their work so they can be very normal right. in their normal life. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, you know, people who enjoy this stuff, it's very fascinating for me to uh, meet them and, and see them and uh, try to enhance their enjoyment of what they like to do, uh, tell, what they like to collect. Tell us where uh, our, our viewers can find all things Don Post on the, on the web. Oh, Where should well, they go? Um, there, there's a lot of uh, pages on Don Post Studios, historically. And uh, so, you know, if you just put in Don Post Studios, uh, you'll find those pages and the things that we did uh, regarding Star Wars and Universal Monsters and the 70s and all that. And, you know, and that's all online. Don Post Studios is now a historical artifact of this industry and uh for you know, now for now right never well, say y yes but <laughs> it's uh you know it it was a really and it's been a really enjoyable time doing all this and meeting all these people and working with some fantastic artists and and uh, being able to produce these these things with uh, a good quality that's always been the goal. Uh, well, what's interesting about your line is that I know it encouraged a lot of people actually to take up this, this industry, uh, just getting one of your masks. So I want to check some comments here. We have some time. Um, uh, this guy is an icon. He made the pods for Invasion. Well, Would love to hear about that. That's from Red Clark. Okay, well, I was about... Uh seven or eight at the time they were making that stuff and uh, you know and I saw the process it was my uh, my mother would go down and and work on that project and uh, um, they used some very basic uh, techniques in order to create the pods and fabrication and it, primarily yes. well no they were uh, the, it was a one-piece mold mm -hmm. or a two-piece mold uh, that they uh, filled with latex, and you can imagine those pods, they were taking like uh, gallons, 10, 15 gallons of latex, and that gets to be pretty heavy. And then it had to be uh, slip cast, slushed out the latex, let it dry a little bit, and fill it with polyfoam. And uh, they did that over and over and worked late into the night and I remember they'd even have to get a babysitter for me uh, in order to work late in the night to get all this stuff done. So you and I have been inhaling polyfoam fumes our entire lives. Absolutely. High five. Yeah. Right. Yes, we're lucky to be alive. Right. Exactly. Well, that makes us <laughs> We a have the same childhood. Demented. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have some great comments here. I want to just give you some shout outs. Uh, hey Don from White Lion 44, um, Creation X says Halloween is three things, pumpkins, cold weather, and Don Post masks. Well, we that's agree. Really, that's very kind. Uh, we have, uh, wow, Don is younger than I thought. I grew up with FM Magazine and the ads for his masks. This man has had so much plastic surgery, you can't believe right. it. Well, there's Close a up Don front. Post senior He's just too, old. So, you know. <laughs> It's the uh, name you've known for that long, and, but he is I've, not that old. You know, I do look a lot like him, so <laughs> people mistake us for each other. Yeah, exactly. All uh, oh right, Don. Um, Walter Amaro says, beautiful pieces, part of history. We agree. Ron Cole says, I'm 47. I think I've known the name Don Post since I was a preteen, at least. Uh, Very kind. And then we have a question for you. Uh, Red Clark says or asks, Don, please talk about designing the Halloween 3 masks. Love everything you do. You make Halloween exciting. Silver Shamrock. Right. Well, uh, they, uh, the Halloween 3 people came to me and they asked uh, if we could design some masks for it and they said they were going to do a scene uh, with the mask being made 
in some kind of machinery and some kind of set they were going to build. And we said, and I said, well, why don't, this is a real mass factory here. Why don't you film here? And they did. And it saved them some money probably, but also it very, made it very authentic. And, and I'm really happy that Don Post Studios got to be a part of that, that movie. Um, you've got so much love coming in right now. David Bush, Dave Bushti, that's a great name, Dave Bushti, uh, says true art. And on that note, let's pan over to Don's mask while I read some more awesome comments. Uh, I believe uh, uh, Walter Amaro says uh, great inspiration. Ron Cole is wearing a Don Post mask right now. All right, so am I. In honor of you. <laughs> um, and thanks for the story, Don. So awesome from Red Clark. And what is your favorite Universal Monster mask that you made? That's from Dave Bushti. From Universal Monsters? I would say the Frankenstein. Uh, that's a very imposing mask. I love the Frankenstein 2001? No, I'm saying these, these are 1970 masks. But oh, earlier. The Universal masks, uh, the Frankenstein is very imposing. And uh, it's just an icon of monsters. Well, we all are so happy to see you here. Right. And we all are thankful to you for the work your company did right. to inspire a generation of monster makers right. to make their own masks and, yeah. and uh, give audiences around the world awesome stuff. So well, thank you. Well, all of you are really kind, your comments, and uh, really enjoyed doing what I did. Well, thank you, Don, from all of us. Let's put our virtual right. hands together. You can just type in clap, 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 so we can convey it to Don right. Post. And a, a final uh, reminder, those of you who don't know Don, those of you who do know Don, you should know the history of this man if you're into monster making. Google Don Post Studios, right. learn about him, learn about the history, uh, because we're only where we are today because of where we came from. And Don right. Post was a big part of that. So thank okay. you again for being here. Don Thanks Post. I don't get starstruck often. Don Post. Come on. Um, who's next? Uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying. Oh, do we have Don Lanning standing by? Get in here, dude. Um, well, here's a man who uh, needs no introduction in this, in this crowd. Oh, did I jump the gun? Is he next? Did, did you cut line? All right. Um, Jordy, you're first, then Don. Um, sorry, guys. I didn't realize David Sanger was flying in with our next interview. Uh, hey, Jordy. Right here. Um, Don Landing is coming up, so don't go anywhere. We have Jordy just left his booth uh, with producer David Sanger, and they brought some cool artwork to share with you guys. Uh, back here and here. Um, Jordy. Uh, is a brilliant creature designer. He has worked on many, many films. You've seen his work in a little movie called Avatar. Uh, he did some brilliant maquette designs for that. Uh, he worked for uh, my father on Predator 2. And, and he's, and he's a wallflower. And Edward Scissorhands. And uh, he's just really great. And you guys know him from the Stan Winston School site. What's going on, dude? What's going on at Son of Monster Palooza? You huh. can do it. Hi, you can hi, do it. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Who's watching? Hi. Um, <laughs> I'm Jordu Shell. Um, and what you doing here at Son of Monster Palooza, Jordu? Well, uh, I ask myself that question all the time. But the main reason is that I love monsters and I love to sell monsters. I love to make monsters and create them and put them out to the, to the world and hope they pay good hard-earned cash for my <laughs> junk. Jordu. Jordu. Some of them do. <laughs> the joke's on them. They fall apart the instant they get them home. Jordu, creator of short-lived masks. Um... Tell, us, tell people where they can see your uh, website and your art if they don't know it already. Uh, you can go to shellstudio.com. That's S-C-H-E-L-L -L studio.com. And look at uh, the monsters I have there. I have masks and little resin busts and uh, learning tools and all kinds of things there uh, for you to take a look at in our store. Plus, you can also just look for free, although I am thinking about starting a pay site. That's not true. 
Um, you can look there for free at all the monsters, of course, that I've created over the years for various films. Uh, and uh, there you go. Uh, you got to go. Check it out. The, the body of work will blow your mind. He's truly uh, in a class uh, by himself. We have some beautiful lessons on the Stan uh, I, Winston I was School. I in a class by myself because they were trying to mainstream that's me what in I was, third grade. That's what I was saying, because they but wouldn't let him play with the other yeah, kids. they put me in a separate class. For very obvious reasons. <laughs> He's incorrigible. Do you know what it's like to shoot a lesson with George Duchel? Literally. We have to whip the... We have to, back to the teaching! Um, but this is why we love him. I'm uncomfortable. Uh, let's, talk about the art that, let's talk about the art that you brought, and then we're oh. going to take some questions from you guys watching. So I'm going to bring both of them up. Oh! Alrighty. <laughs> Go ahead and talk to everyone what? about this. I'm going to step what? over here. Just peek between them. This will be weird. Here you go. <laughs> hello? Hello? <laughs> he hello? I can't. Oh, hi. Hi. I'm Jordi Shell, <laughs> and I'm here for the Stanwinson School of Character Arts. No, it's not a lesson. Guess what? I just tell us what you brought. I just can it would be oh, nice Jesus. if... Yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt Winston is a problem for many reasons. But the biggest is that he just caused feedback and that hurt all of our ears. <laughs> That's annoying. Hi, I'm Jordu Shell. <laughs> and I've got creations here that I'm uh, being forced to talk about because there's a gun that's being held to my, well, lower regions right now. Anyway... So let's talk about Spock first, because I know a lot of people have questions about realistic bust making. This is made out of silicone. Uh, and what I do is very similar to how you make most things. Uh, I sculpt it out of water clay first. Hi, someone's creeping into frame. What are you doing? Could you go away, please, sir? Sir, 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 sir. What? Leave it. It's cute. It's awkward and about to fall and he can't see it. It's not going to... Right, it's, it's even harder to see me when you're standing in the way, sir. Goodbye. Sir, Thank sir, you. Sir. 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 Sorry. Sorry. Hi. Let's, him. Let's get back to the point. So I sculpted out of water clay. We make a two-piece mold out of ultra cow. Then silicone is painted in layers inside of there. We also have a separate mold uh, for a core, a resin core that we make so that the silicone skin, when pulled out of the mold, slides over the core. Uh, once we seam the piece, uh, I paint it with an airbrush uh, and some spattering of various acrylic colors. I seal it with a liquid silicone paint, uh, and then I insert the eyes from behind with a little hole in the head, okay? The eyes are made by a guy named David Hohen, who's in the Bay Area. Uh, he makes eyes for uh, veterans who have lost uh, their eyes in uh, warfare. So he does the most realistic eyes I've ever seen in my life, and I'm proud to have them in here. They're pretty expensive per pair, um, but they're very much worth it because they really bring the piece life. As you can see, when you look closely in there, you can see how logical a choice it is to go with David Hohen for the eyes. Uh, so then the hair is inserted one by one uh, with a needle uh, by Denise Baer, who I think is the best hair person I've ever seen. Uh, she's fast, she's accurate, uh, and man, oh man, she really uh, puts herself through a lot to make sure it comes out just right. Uh, she did an outstanding job on this, and then I bought the costume actually on eBay from one of those Star Trek nuts who insists on having a perfect, perfect costume. So uh, I had a seamstress uh, named Trisha Villalobos cut this carefully. Uh, we put a beautiful piece of uh, urethane foam here to make the piece end nice and neatly. Uh, and then, you know, we mount it on a, on a flange and, and stand like this, and you've got a beautiful finished piece. This creature is called Phaedron, and it's just a latex mask filled with polyfoam. Are you going to hold that? Uh, and I airbrush it and I gloss the eyes with five minute epoxy, and there you have a finished monster. So uh, that's basically how I go about it. I can see that this is very awkward for John, our cameraman. So I'm going to hold these things to the side while I finish, even though they each weigh we have 75 so, pounds. We have so many. You're so powerful. Look at the power of that. Yes. Look how powerful he is. Yeah, they're really heavy, actually. Hold on. Let's move this over Thank here. You. Oh. So, Jordu, a lot of love has been coming in, and I want to share it with you uh, because I know you love love. 
So everyone's saying, holy crap, Jordu! I think everyone needs love. Everyone uh, needs I'm going to go love. through. Here we go. So everyone is clapping. A lot of people typing clap, clap, clap. Uh, we all need love. Then we have Jordu from Kyle Barker. If you uh, don't have love... We have Killian Gonzalez says Jordel... Jordel sh Jor There's no point... Jordu shell, woo! To live Death it. becomes you says Jordu so, is my hero. What an inspiration. Me, if you don't have... Emily Rayworth makeup says wow. Then there's no reason Kyle Barker says going. holy spot. You can just keep going without love. But like, ML Tharm says Jordu. It has no meaning. <laughs> Jordu shell, another garage kit. Look, do the eye thing you do. This is one of his favorite things to do with the water. <laughs> Every lesson, we have to dry them off. There is no off. reason to just keep going through life. Stephen Bono says, Jordu, I cry this looking at your work. He's crying. Art. Walter Amaro says, you're a legend. <laughs> Why uh, does this be me? <laughs> Can we finish already? Will you follow him on Facebook so he stops crying? Seriously, this is All enough right, already. We're done. Go back to your booth. I love okay, you. Bye. Um, all right, so guys, everyone, there's a lot of comments uh, here for no. Facebook. We got to send it back. Follow this man on Facebook. Go to his Facebook page. Go to his website. Check out his lessons on the Stan Winston School site. We've done several with Jordu. Uh, Sometimes there's vomit. <laughs> we cut out. We edit out all the vomiting. Thank you, Jordu Shell. Woo! Virtual clapping. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! I hit that pretty woman. I'm so oh sorry. Okay, she's not that pretty. Calm down, pal. He's, you oh know, I would like to say okay. that Jordu no, isn't that Wait, always no, like I, that. I, but he uh, yes. is always well, you know, like headset, that, don't you? which we love, but it makes editing his lessons really difficult. Uh, <laughs> all right, we have Don Lanning standing by. Where's Don? Uh, while we're waiting on Don, uh, I want to thank you all who've been with us for hours. We had, uh, we've had a great weekend. Yesterday, we had uh, John Cherevka in our booth, a key painter at Legacy Effects. Uh, who's painted Iron Man and Avatars and everything else. Brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, demo. Then we had Rick Lazzarini do an incredible animatronics demonstration. Both of those uh, hangouts are on our YouTube channel under the webinars and workshops playlist. So go there, you can check out those as live replays right on our YouTube channel. Do do? Um, this morning we were with Steve Johnson and Megan Arford and Johnny Leftwich and Lauren Lakis. They did a brilliant uh, makeup application. That's my wife. Let's just drop this in Hold my on one sec. How are you? Hey, hey, honey. I'm on a live broadcast oh, now. I love Can you. I? Uh, We're good. I'm broadcasting live right now. Can I call you back? Is that, is that Amy? They want to know what time to expect me. Um, I'll be home soon, dear. <laughs> All right. I, I don't know what time exactly. Like six-ish, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna have to call you back, honey. All right. I love you. I'll bring the zombie pictures. Yes. Bye. Hey, Amy from Serbia. <laughs> Good. That's my wife. We just had our 15th wedding hey. anniversary. All right. I love Happy you. Anniversary. I'll bring the zombie pictures. <laughs> Happy anniversary. So anyway, that's where you can see the previous uh, webcast. Here, you, this man, Don hey, Lanning, part of the Stan Hello. Winston School family, uh, brilliant, brilliant character sculptor, concept artist, uh, and instructor. Uh, he... You, you taught our very first ever live webinar. A great experience. And yeah. we had a blast. And yeah. one of the reasons you are our maiden voyage is because you have such a, an easy, open way of teaching that's very great. natural. So great. Great. we love you. Right on. Thank you. Talk to us. I know, you, I know you don't have a booth this year, but talk to you us don't. about what's going on in your creature life. I know you've been pretty busy. Uh, yeah, not much is happening right now. I just came to this show, Monster Palooza. It's so great to be here with everybody and share part of our artistic community and see all the new art. Uh, at, here at Son of Monster Palooza, there's a bunch of new artists and a bunch of new artwork, and it's been great to walk around and see everybody's new stuff. And so uh, this is the kind of show where we go, and uh, I go home, and I'm so inspired by all the stuff that the new people have done that it makes me want to sculpt and get to work. So I'm so happy to be here. It's great to see Steve Wang, Don Post. We all grew up on Don Post. Uh, some of the first stuff that we had as little boys was going to the Magic Store or going to a, a Halloween store uh, in Hollywood and it would be lined with Don Post masks. And uh, I'm pretty sure I owned Old Vampire at least 10 times. Timberwolf, Grey Timberwolf at least three times. <laughs> and the alien with the three prongs. Countless times. Oh, so anyways, yeah. big piece of history there. We love you, Don. 
It's and, awesome uh, to have Don Post here. And we have a lot of new artists. Talk about the we new have, artists. We, no, no, we have a lot of new artists, uh, people I haven't met before, that are now participating in the show. And so we always want to invite you in the future to come out. Yes, out. if you're ever in Los Angeles uh, yeah. in the fall or in the spring, come to the Monster Palooza shows. They're the only shows like them, I Can think. Can we talk about the webinar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, let's talk about what's coming up with this guy. We are launching a new live course. Right with you right. a week from yesterday, so next Saturday. Tell me about it. So we did this experiment with the first webinar, which was to go ahead and do a, a, a high resolution experience where we all feel like we're in the room together and we have kids from around the world doing the most amazing sculpture. It went off so great that we're gonna do it again. Yep. And we're going to do a webinar preview uh, this coming Tuesday. Tuesday. And I'd love you to come into YouTube and check that out. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to sculpt for that, but most importantly, we're going to describe uh, the class to everybody. But um, the main feature, the main feature is the students' work. Our students did such amazing work. We're going to be showcasing that work. And uh, I want to just show everybody what the students did. Our expectation was here, and the students landed so far ahead of where we thought they would be. And yep. uh, it's just a magical experience. So we're going to do the whole thing again uh, so that we're able to extend these benefits uh, once again to people around the world. Yep. And, uh, so, so those of you who have been watching this and um, are getting excited about learning, uh, like Don said, we're doing a free preview uh, Tuesday, this Tuesday. Uh, from 9 to 11 Pacific. If you go to our website, stanwinstonschool.com, click on the webinars button. Great. You'll see uh, Don's lesson there with a the little enroll banner. You can click on that and that'll, you'll see where you can sign up for the free preview. So join us. He's going to be sculpting and meeting you for two hours and we have your next big four-week webinar coming yeah, starting yeah. Saturday. So we'd, we'd love you to join us. It's a yes. really personal experience. We cover everything from job advice to, of course, how-to techniques, but it's also a real in-depth situation where I get to do what I love, which is talk about the behind-the-scenes stuff. Look, there's a shark up there. Well, uh, That's so awesome. Oh uh, God, there is a shark. A Can you see this? There. Well, there's a shark flying. <laughs> get a shot of that shark. Anyways. There's a shark. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah. It's a shark blimp. It's a blark. Anyways, um, this is Monster Palooza. This is what happens. But what else is going on? I, I bought a bunch of monster art. During the show, oh. I bought a bunch of toys. Well, good. You're you're a consumer yeah. here, then. Yes, I that's am a good. You're keeping this show alive. Um, also, I um. got to give a shout out to my friends in uh, Toronto, Canada. I'm going to the IMATS makeup show. Oh, cool! And uh, representing us and, and having a great time with that. Um, and your course with Joel show. Harlow is coming up too. That's, that's for right. locals. Uh, Joel Harlow, Academy Award winner. Uh, we're doing a makeup class in the second month of the upcoming year, and it's the real stuff. It's uh, silicone makeup. Uh, body double and all the real high-end materials and please look for that if you like but um, okay I'm gonna give, give a shout yeah. out here you got a lot Tell of me. fans Tell chiming me. in and we haven't listened so here we go um, you. Uh, Kyle Barlson looks like you guys are having fun we are having fun hey Stephen Warner from UVA hello Stephen we spent a year with Stephen uh, and his team out at University of Virginia building creatures all year long last year uh, and it's great that you're watching um, some here we go. Say hello to Don. Don, I love your sculpt. This is ML Tharm. Is it Tharmy or Tharm? I never, I'm sorry, ML. Don, I love your sculpting lesson on SWS Tutorials. I hope one day to join your live lessons and hope we get to talk sometime. Join us on Tuesday and you'll get to do just that. And then you can join us for four weeks. Um, our, our favorite elf is here. Oh, oh, our favorite elf is here. Don. Who do you think? Marita. Oh, yeah. How's she doing? Marita is here. Don, big hugs to you, my wonderful teacher. Miss you and the rest of the guys. Uh, Marita was in Don's first course, and she is a brilliant artist. Oh, um, follow her, guys. Click on her name. Um, Don Lanning, beautiful man. I'm super happy to see you again. That's <laughs> Stephen Buono. Uh, Killian wishes me a happy anniversary. Thank you. And hello, Don. You're so charming and an inspiration to all of us. Uh, James Murphy, it's so great to have a way to connect to our heroes. That's exactly what this is. All right, we have Danny Luvisi standing by. Hey, Danny. Happy anniversary, guys. Hey, dude. We'll, we'll have you in right in one moment. 
This man's coming up next, Dan Luvisi, yeah, yeah, genius Photoshop uh, artist, concept designer, and author of Last Man Standing, Kill Book of a Bounty Hunter. We're going to finish up with Don, and then we'll bring you in for an official... So get, get out of here, man. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, death, be death becomes you, says Don, as a magnificent instructor. Um, Okay, oh, this is good. Killian Gonzalez says, Jordu's tears were fake and hilarious, but Don will make us cry for real. That's the truth. I'm always right here, baby. <laughs> right in the heart. Right in the heart. Walter Amaro has already signed in for the webinar preview. We'll see you Tuesday morning, Walter, 9 a.m. Pacific great. time. Uh, ML, uh, ML wants the classes to go on forever. White Lion 44, try to be there Tuesday. Guys, this is from Marita. This is a testimonial. Guys, if you're able to join Don's webinars, do it. I attended the very first course, and he's an amazing teacher, and you'll learn loads. Thanks, Marita. Your check is in the mail. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have to say goodbye, but please tell everyone where to find you online. Uh, online, just uh, Facebook, Google, whatever. Um, <laughs> we'll see you in a couple of days. Thank Don, you so much. Check out Don you. Landing on Facebook. We love this man. All right. Um, and we have another guest. This is Dan Luvisi uh, coming in. Dan is a genius. The things he does with Photoshop. Yeah, you got it. Uh, 30 seconds till Dan joins us. Thank you so much. Yeah, All right, I'm going to vamp a little bit. We need 30 seconds. Um, Thank you. This has Thank been you. a rip roaring. Uh, Finale to this. Here we go, Dan Lavisi. What's up, dude? Are we all good? How are you? Yes. Good. Good How, are you? You. How are you? How are you? Um, what? Uh, yeah. Let's put your pack in your. Uh, sorry, I'm all in your pants. Right no worries. Um, this is this is uh, Danny Lavisi. He is a genius uh, artist. The things he does with Photoshop are will. Oh, oh we're not. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, do we lose <laughs> the broadcast? It's all good. I'm like fumbling over stuff, dripping my water out of my hand. Did we lose the broadcast? Sure. So they're all just, what's happening for them? What do they see right now? I don't know. Chris, click on a link and let's see. Yeah, yeah. Because if you have any tips. Okay, sorry for that technical hiccup, guys. Uh, we're standing here with Danny Luvisi, uh, absolutely brilliant artist, uh, concept designer, author, writer of Last Man Standing, Kill Book of a Bounty Hunter, and you have a sequel coming up and yeah. many other projects. A lot of projects. Uh, about three others right now. This is a very, very busy man. Um, tell us, I know you don't have, do you have a booth? You don't have a booth here. No, not, no. Uh, what do you think of the, the show? What it's have awesome. been the highlights for you? I've already made the rounds about four or five times. Nice. Having a good time so far. Any standout art you've seen? Bruce Mitchell. I'm of course. A fan. Um, I'm terrible with names, but I mean, Jordi Shells is great. Uh, Simon Lee is great. Uh, I saw some ones in the back. I don't know the names of the artists. <laughs> well, I saw some cool stuff. It is, it is kind of awesome every year. More and more yeah. uh, new artists come on the scene, and that's so awesome because that means we will... We will have monsters into the future. Of course. Uh, will you tell everyone where to find you on Facebook and a little bit about what you're working on now? So um, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Dan Luvisi Art. And, uh, D A N L U V I S I. And uh, right now, I'm, my book, Last Man Standing, comes out next month, middle of November. And uh, you can pick it up on Amazon. It's called Last Man Standing Kill Book of a Bounty Hunter. Make sure you get the Dark Horse one if you want it, because that's the newest. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's a fun book to work on. Uh, this, this book was the result of Dan um, kind of getting tired of being a gun for hire. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about that? Because a lot of, a lot of artists um, uh, awaken to, to find that they dreamed of being in art, and then as a professional artist, they stopped being creative because they're doing other people's stuff all the time. And you got sick of it. You don't do it anymore. Can you talk no. about that transition? I just pretty much got tired of making someone else money when I could be making myself more. And, um, you know, my dad always enforced the idea of being my own boss as a kid and, you know, make your own company, make this, don't work for someone, be the leader, don't be the follower. And uh, that just always stuck with me. And one day I was tired of suits and corporate figures telling me how to draw and when they had no idea what they wanted. And I decided, look, I'm going to make my own book. And I sat down for two years, I made the book, and 
got to where I am now. Um, and how has it been? Uh, talk about sort of the domino effect of getting the first book out there and how it all yeah, led no, to... Yeah, no, it's kind of crazy. Um, it was a slow burn at first, but then eventually uh, Paramount picked it up for the film rights. A um, few other studios want it, but eventually Paramount won out. And right now we're working on the movie. The script is done, and we're trying to get a director. And uh, from there, you know, we started getting toys and statues and Legacy made that one. And it's just, it's been a crazy ride. But I think that it's just about to hit where I've been trying to get to finally. And it's been five years. That's why I just got this. Nice. Before. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited about it. And it, like I said, it comes out middle of November. Check it out. I think it's, it's a new attempt to start comics, but, you know, I think it's fun. Uh, you guys have to check out his stuff. Last Man, uh, the Facebook page for Last Man Standing is. is oh, man, you're putting me on the spot. What? I don't even know that. These no artist knows their social media. If you links. go to my Facebook, you can click it right there. All right, go to Stefan. What's the Facebook? He, uh, he doesn't even remember know. his own Facebook page his name Facebook. for Last Man. Is it LMS <laughs> Kill Book of a Bounty Hunter or Last Man Standing? No, no, it's not Last Man Standing. I, I can't get that. I think it's just LMS LMS Kill Book. In any case, Google thekillbook.com. Bounty killbook of a hunter. Thekillbook.com. Yeah. Got it. SML, I don't know. Yeah, and it is Last Man Standing. Yeah, Check wait, it wait, out. No, it's Facebook LMS Killbook, yeah. Facebook.com slash LMS Killbook. Yeah. So Thank you, Eric. Go there and check out his stuff. You will instantly become a fan. And we just did a live course with Danny. Uh, a few weeks ago and he blew people's minds and the student work that came out of it was amazing and we're mm -hmm. going to do another one with you soon. I hope so. Um, so follow uh, Danny and let's put a round of applause uh, together for this man for being an innovator. Thank you. Yes, Thank we you. do. We got Bruce Mitchell standing Thank by. Thanks, Thank man. You. You know? um, this is like This is like 300 artists in an hour. Bam, who's next? Let's do this. Uh, Bruce D. Mitchell is on his way in here. Another Stan Winston School favorite. Uh, this man is the mech driver. Uh, Jake, can you pan over there and show what this man gets inside on occasion? Um, Bruce, uh, Bruce is uh, a genius artist in his check, own right. One, two, check, check, check microphone check. check. One, two, one, what two. is this? I don't know. <laughs> I, got no, I got no rhymes. <laughs> Um, so we're, <laughs> we got Bruce here. Uh, a lot of you know Bruce uh, from the Stan Winston School site. He's got his own site. We'd like to start by telling people where they can find you. Um, go ahead and shout out your links. At Bruce D. Mitchell, Conceptual Executioner. It's a blog spot. It's humble. It's uh, low tech and, and easy. And uh, you can find me on Facebook, Bruce D. Mitchell. And you can also fan page off the uh, video that we did. It's, it's Bruce D. Mitchell without the period. But hit me up there because they wouldn't let me change the name once it got rolling. So. And that's because you had, to, you had so many friends on your uh, civvy one that you had to create a fan one. Is that right, what happened? Right. And I, I, I keep up with both. And any questions you got, I'll, I'll answer uh, as long as they're straight up real questions. So. Yeah, no BS questions. No, no BS. And, Tolerated. Know, what's it all about? Well, I, I'm a slow <laughs> typer. But yeah, uh, no, if can. you keep something specific right. to the video lesson, I'm happy to get back to the people. Um, I'm, I'm well, this dude is a great teacher. And like you said, he's very responsive. And he's brought some of his work here. Um, Bruce has been in effects for, what, 15 years more? No, since uh, 1991. 20. 92. Two. God, know, I'm sorry to age you, man. Yeah, it's all um, right. And he's been working for other people, making magic for them for a long time. One of the industry's top f uh, fabrication specialists, although he does it all. But he, like Danny Luvisi, got a little tired of uh, creating stuff for other people, although he still does it for his day job. But at night, you've been working on an incredible line, and you brought your newest creation. So why don't you take over and tell us a little bit about this and how you made it? Uh, this is, uh, if can you, you follow zoom the in, videos Jake? at all or any of my, my Facebook or blogs, I'm, I'm constantly making masks and I'm making them in my own obsessive compulsive way. I'm making them, they're all one-offs and they're all made out of an epoxy clay called uh, Magic Sculpt. So I'm uh, continually perfecting or experimenting with the technique and it's uh, something that's, that's garnered me some attention on the side. So I, I do do effects work in the day. It's my bread and butter, but then I go home and this is kind of, uh, this is my therapy after a long day of other art director's stuff that uh, I go home and I, this is my proving ground. This is what I work towards. This, 
They've all, they all exhibit some sort of gimmick. And the movies, I love bad guys, good guys, whatever characters that have a fantastic layered reveal. So there's always attributes that they, it's a mask, but now the goggles flip off. Usually there's a ma mouthpiece that comes off too. Whatever's going to slowly reveal the character underneath the mask. Whatever this is all supposed to help emulate. Uh, I love character-driven movies, and this is the kind of stuff that I try to show off or you know this is all minus the character but i'm hoping that the mask itself tells a story when you look at it so you get an idea of who may be underneath or have your own conception of what that would be uh, this is a plague doctor i didn't invent the plague doctor they've been around since the plague but uh I, it was one that i i i had requested several times people thought it, it might be my kind of thing so i'm i'm totally into history for inspiration and constantly go back and forth, but uh, I'll put this guy on if my microphone will allow it really quick. Yeah, and while you're trying that on, we have a couple questions here. Um, I wonder, I hope you can answer while, can you stick the microphone inside the mask? Yes, can you hear me? It's going to be muffled and weird. All right, Red Clark says, Bruce, what was your favorite creature you've ever done? And has something ever ended up better on film than it looked on set? Or vice versa. Or when you build it, can you hear me? Yeah, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't do it with a mask on. Maybe not with the, uh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, my favorite creature that I've worked on. You know, there's uh, Patrick Totopoulos. I worked there for a bit, and, and it was where, actually, Steve Wang was the lead on it, and it was awesome to work with him, but it's called The Cave, and it is the best movie monster that you never see. And it was an incredible creature, and all I was working on really was the wings for it. But it was like, you know, you are a cog in the wheel. You are part of the machine that creates the, the end goal, which is a fantastic creature. And uh, I, I worked on wing membranes, but uh, actually Tim Gore was a painter on it. Dan Platt was a sculptor. Uh, Hiroshi was a sculptor on it. But it was awesome to work with all those guys and then create this thing, although you don't see it, but that is my favorite creature. It, does it not even show up in the movie? In bad lighting and ah. in, in close-up shots, but it, it, they could do so much. I think Brian Steele was actually inside of it. Yeah, he was inside of it. He, Brian Steele, being a great guy, bought lunch oh, for yeah. the crew one day. All so. right. Uh, Brian Steele's one of the top uh, creature performers around, and uh, you should check out him on Creature Boy. That's his Facebook that's page. That's right. He's going to be in that, uh, oh, I don't remember the title of the movie, but there's a, a movie, a bio on creature suit actors that, uh, that oh, yeah, is he's, out. Oh, yeah. He's been out. Terminators. He's been werewolves. He's been everything. Yes. Um, I, I want to just read you a couple other things. Uh, Death Becomes You says, really informative tutorials from Bruce. Uh, uh, Matthew Walther says, Yay, Bruce, your mask lessons were super informative. Uh, let's see here. Love your stuff, Bruce. So you got Thanks, a lot of guys. big fans. I, you know, I love the feedback, too. One thing, it's been, a, it's been an honor to be on the roster with the guys that you have in the tutorials. These are, I mean, they're, they're, they are the peers in the community or the, the business, so it, it's awesome to be invited into that. But it's great to get feedback from the viewers or even know that somebody, you know, this is stuff that, you know, let's say it's after work and I'm working in the garage, but this is something that, you know, I'm, I'm spending lots of time on it. Sometimes it's like, should I be doing yes. something else? What am I? Think of all the good stuff that's come from this. Yes, right. You know? uh, yeah, no, it has been great. And, uh, uh, you know, I do believe that for the effort you put into craft, uh, your efforts are rewarded with either attention or, you know, whatever accolades you can get. I, that's right. Uh, he is another, I mean, Simon Lee is a great example. I love uh, Don Lanning is a great, all these guys, Jordan is a great example of people who, just because an industry might want to put you in a box, you never let that stop you no, from I'm expressing your sculptor, full. So I go home and do it because yeah. I can sculpt, damn it. And it's like, I'm going to get it out. I got to get right. it out. And it's like you keep mentioning these names and, and really is, these are guys I myself could geek out on that. Uh, that I look up to, so it's it's awesome to be part of it. And again, from the people, like uh, I know a lot of people were giving me encouragement as I would I would just post, and it's like it's Facebook, it's simple, but it's a simple tool to use. So I just post my progress as we go. But I appreciate all your likes, I appreciate all your comments. They, they're encouragement for those late nights where I'm wondering, like, am I going to get this done? What am I doing? So thank you very much uh, well, I say, since you like the comments i'm gonna drink i'm gonna oh i'm gonna what were you gonna say and then i'll read you some more i had a good weekend here i sold two pieces so yeah! it, you know personal wise getting out there <laughs> it paid for everything i put into it and i made a profit so well you know, if thanks. you if you 
had this and you're uh, accessible to you, would you buy a mask like this? Let's see by a show of yeses in the comments. Are you a fan of Bruce's work? Would you like to buy some of oh, Bruce's and, work? And, and, and Say again, yes in the comments, and you can go to his page and talk to him and maybe make a transaction. We have <laughs> talked about doing a part three with the mask, and because uh, I feel I feel a little, I don't, not like we cheated you, but we wanted to do more. Like I think the stuff that makes my stuff more unique is the magnetic goggly attributes with the face mask and stuff. So we will continue that. We will get to this kind of stuff because I mean that's the fun stuff. That's that's where it's at, and that's where you really get to add character layers to your your creation so we will continue this so look out for that part three with bruce d mitchell and i'm gonna leave you with a couple nice comments um ml says bruce your video with the kids really helped me out with portfolio advice and the milliput technique milliput Not, oh it's a putty but oh it's the milliput milliput is it milliput we were using magic skull but i know what you mean so cheers man rock on uh, Red Clark says, I really enjoyed the cave because of the creatures. Now we'll look for more of the design stuff and photographs of it. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, Ron Cole says, Magic Sculpt is great stuff. It's resin clay, but it's really strong and lightweight. Uh, yeah, you uh, don't drop it. I mean, it will break, but uh, it also breaks cleanly, so you can repair it quickly on set. So. Uh, Ahmed <laughs> Al Nawab. Ahmed Al Nawab says, Question, what is the hardest thing in your job? And then we'll take one more question, and then we're going to move on to our next guest. The hardest thing in the job is uh, the time, the time you're allotted, especially anymore jobs are going faster and faster, or you know whether it's not a lot of money and there's not a lot of time. It is hard to maintain and complete something on schedule. It's, it's the biggest challenge. And that's uh, whether you're working with just a few people or a whole team, because every team needs to have its time with the piece to get their function done, whether they are you know, it's like the sculpting, molding, fabrication, paint, fabrication again, back to paint, back to mechanical. You all need to work in, in quite an orchestrated symphony in a job that's pure chaos. So um, the biggest thing is the time. And then if you're working on something you know is going to be shit. So, <laughs> and I don't usually swear, so I apologize. We got a lot that. of yeses of people who on would camera. buy your stuff. So... Put your money where your mouth is. Well, go, to, go to Bruce's Facebook page. Check out his stuff. I'm, uh, I'm um, wearing my, I'm me and my own billboard here. You know, you got to join the conceptual executioner. He has a Whatever. mission to execute some concepts. Uh, Walter Amaro says, "My God, so much valuable information in so little time." Ron Cole is staying put. He thought he had to go, but he's staying. Good choice. Um, Heather Burroughs loves your work and loves your tutorials on the Stan Winston School site. Thank you. And everyone is just loving you. So there cool. you go. Uh, hit me up again on Facebook. It's Bruce D. Mitchell without the period. That's the fan side. I'm, I'm full on the other one. I appreciate all the uh, attention. And uh, I'll, I'll take your questions as well. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you cool, for man. your time. I love what course, you guys dude. are doing. Of course. So. It's awesome. One to be of our part favorites. Of this is Mech Driver. And that, that suit Bruce is so easy Mitchell. To wear. He drives you have that no thing. Idea. It's just it's totally light. I, I feel like I have to hold myself back so I don't the hardest thing was not crushing people because <laughs> it's so easy to jump around in. So, well, I no, know we got a, a bunch of a bunch more assignments for him coming up. So, you'll be seeing Bruce in the Mech suit uh, coming up. You'll be seeing more lessons from him on our site and follow his personal pages and uh, support this beautiful work. And again, you All guys right, and your crew, you guys are always cool and easy to work with. So you make, you make doing what we do very easy to do on camera. So It's thanks. fun, man. We get it to hang fun, out with the most so. creative people in the world. Cheers. Uh, how, cool. How cool is Say that? Hi. Take care. All right. Show us some claps. Just type clap for Bruce. Type clap. Love you, Bruce. Get out of here. Is this about time to wrap it up? Um, we, have, we have Terry Wolfinger coming in. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, you have to see his artwork, and then, then that wraps it up. We have one final, oh, and the Kyoto Brothers. The Kyoto Brothers and Terry Wolfinger, and then we are done. Um, so, while we're waiting on those guys, uh, Jake, can you give them a nice slow pan around the room? I'm going to step away for a moment and hand this to John Ailes so I can find those artists. Hi. Hi. So Matt's going to go onto the floor and, and list artists, which is what it was meant to do. Is this one still going? It is. So I don't know what Matt's promised anyone. 
Jake is panning around the room and we're taking a look at our neighbors. Doesn't seem to be winding down at all, even though we're a couple hours away from the end of Monster uh, Son of Palooza. I think if Matt is bringing over Terry Wolfinger, that dude is an incredible illustrator. But if he's bringing over the Kyoto Brothers, you guys should get busy on Google if you don't know who the Ko Kyoto Brothers are. But the Kyoto Brothers are a genius team of related animators who uh, have been a part of some of the great music videos and feature films you guys know. Commercials, of course. Uh, team America being one of them. F yeah! Yeah, he can. Uh, that's Don Post's exhibit. This uh, is a replica of a 1978 magazine advertisement for the latex rubber slip masks that he was so famous for. Uh, George Duchel himself has a great collection of Don Post, but look, it's Terry Wolfinger with Matt Winstonk. Hold on, I'll let you do the introductions while I put that one on. on Get that one on Terry. Terry, I hope you don't mind. No, I'll be gentle. Hey, hey We're all. We're so lucky to have you here, Oops. my goodness. Wow, thank you. Nice. Okay, so we have well, Terry Wolfinger with us. Is Terry it? Wolfinger is yeah? a brilliant designer, uh, renderer, illustrator, concept artist, and painter. <laughs> he worked uh, for my father and uh, did gorgeous work over at Stan Winston Studio and uh, is just one of the, the most respected in town and has been getting into this beautiful, fine art uh, with monsters as his subject. <laughs> um, so say hello. We've got people out there in, in the interwebs watching you. Can we hear something about what you're, what you're doing here and where to find your work? <laughs> well, you can find my work. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Terry Wolfinger. I also have a blog where I post my, my paintings. That's terrywolfinger.blogspot.com. Can you spell Wolfinger? It's not no. two Fs. <laughs> no, it's not. It's uh, W-O-L-F-I-N-G-E-R. <laughs> and talk to us about this transition for you into a fine art uh, looking yeah. monster collection. Well, obviously I've been a fan of monsters and horror films since a, as a kid, you know. Um, and as you know, I had the honor to work for your dad yeah. as a concept artist and did stuff like that and uh, got to work with a lot of talented people there and uh, started learning Photoshop early 90s, like maybe 94 and uh, pretty much taught myself how to paint using the Photoshop. I, I did the most, most of my painting was done with a mouse <laughs> in the early days, which is next to impossible. <laughs> If you can paint with a mouse, you can paint with anything. <laughs> yeah, paint with chalk. <laughs> um, and what was the inspiration to, to launch this line? I, I wish, um, if you go to his site, uh, you'll see more, um, but you've brought with us, obviously, The Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, this is my latest piece. Uh, really proud how it came out. Uh, it's a Photoshop painting. It's, this is a canvas gicle. Um Yeah, I just, uh, let's see. You know, I've always wanted to, to move towards the fine art. I've done a lot of illustration work in my career. So uh, I uh, met with someone who was putting on a, uh, like a monster themed. Just hold it steady. Oh, He's sorry, tight on sorry. it. He's tight on it. It's going to give them seasickness. Right, right, go. right. Yeah, you can stay tight. It's so beautiful. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it was moving like crazy. Oh, yeah. There you well, go. I don't usually do interviews. I'm going to so. come over here and hold it for you so oh, you can yeah. just talk. Cool. All right, stay zoomed in on this gorgeous thing as Terry's telling us about it. Um, so, yeah, there was an opportunity a few years back to, to be involved with a, an art show that was the classic uh, Universal Monsters. I'm like, oh, I'd, and I did a, a few of those. And the, I did a Bela Lugosi Dracula, and, and I did a Karloff as a, the mummy, and a couple... And had so much fun doing it that I just wanted to keep doing more. And then I heard about Monster Palooza, and I thought, well, I'm going to give it a shot and just start doing this and, and see what the response is. And it, the response has been great. So let's hear let's hear about some of the uh, 
responses you've been getting this weekend? You said it's been a great weekend. Are you seeing just monster people getting really excited about this fine art treatment? Of yeah, they, they, uh, the, the, I've had, this is my third show here at Monster Palooza. And so I have a lot of return fans that come in and they're excited to see the newest piece. And, um, and I, I, you know, I'm, I, I, I think I'm, I'm getting better each time I do one. So. <laughs> You're all right. He's yeah, all right. I, I was pretty pleased. You'll get there. <laughs> this is a good start. This was okay. Yeah, I, I think I was planning on doing, you know, placemats or something with this. <laughs> <laughs> She's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm no, going to check comments to see if any comments have come in. Will you hold on to her for a sure, second? Sure, sure. If any of you have any questions about uh, Terry's work uh, or his work in the industry, he's here. We're live. Uh, I'm going to check the comments now. Um, while we're doing that, can you tell us a little bit about your um, any memories from working with Dad? Uh, uh, any uh, yes. Stan Winston studio experiences you can share? Well, I can remember my interview with 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 your dad. Uh, you know, I had a friend that actually uh, his grandmother was Faye Ray, and she was good friends with your dad. She was uh, not just friends, she's family. Faye oh, that's Ray. right, that's right. Faye yeah, Ray sorry. is my yeah. cousin. I knew that, I knew that. Yeah, <laughs> she's my cousin. So uh, he said, well, you know, we could probably get you in for an interview. I, you're, you're kidding, you know, there's just like, like there's no way. <laughs> but I went in and met with him and he was, he was just so accommodated and, and funny and like he did his Jerry Lewis. He did it on day one? He did it on day one and like it was like the best job interview ever. And then at the end of the interview, he's like, well, how much do you want? <laughs> You're kidding. Uh, just match my salary and I will come here. You fool. <laughs> I know. You fool. <laughs> he gave you a blank check. <laughs> you fool. I know. Got caught up in the excitement. Well, I can the... tell you that Dad did not often uh, offer jobs right on the spot like that, and it's just a testament to your talent. So oh. uh, it's great that you're applying it to something that is your own and that uh, has your stamp, and we support all of you genius monster artists becoming entrepreneurial and oh, well, ex thanks. spreading your wings this way. We got some claps coming in for you. Oh, nice. Um, cool. More Another concept. A, a beautiful piece of art, Walter Amaro says. Oh, Falinra uh, says, love it. Awesome. Uh, ML says, hello, Terry. Uh, <laughs> hello. You're getting lots of claps. You got a <laughs> damn from, uh, from OK. Gives you a damn. <laughs> nice. D-A-Y-U-M. Damn. That's how you say that. Yeah. Uh, Dave Bushti says, mad coolies. <laughs> Ron Coley says, gorgeous in a Bride of Frankenstein kind of way. Nice. Thanks. Uh, red. Uh, da -da -da -da. I love your use of light in your work. So beautiful and eerie. This is from Thank Heather you. Burroughs. Thank you. Mitch McEwen asks, do you sell prints? I do. You, I don't have a shop set up online yet, but if you email me, you can find me on my blog or my website. Just email me, tell what you're interested in. I do PayPal. And tell the site URL again to everybody. It's, it's basically my name, Terry Wolfinger. That's W-O-L-F-I-N-G-E-R dot blogspot dot com. Check him out there and you can see... Uh, you'll see Bella Lugosi's Dracula. You'll see Boris Karloff's uh, Frankenstein's Monster, yep. and all the other great work. Have a question here. Okay. Uh, what is the, your hold on? The your favorite film uh, that you did some concept designs for? Uh, let's see. Favorite one. My favorite one was probably Jurassic Park Two. Jurassic Park Two. Yeah. All right. I did some work on Terminator 3, which was a lot of fun, too. <laughs> so with Daddy. Yeah, I love yeah. It. Um, with Pops. <laughs> all right. Your and dad did choke me one time. He choked you? Yeah. You dad it coming, I'm sure. <laughs> you did a bad design. Yeah, it was a oh, bad design. That's he what came up behind me. You get choked by Stan. Choked me. I almost blacked out. And what? <laughs> <laughs> did he really put his hands around he your He did choke. He was joking around. He was like, Argh. Did he put some, some oomph behind it? A little there a little bit of There's loss little, of oxygen? I started getting a little scared. Of Welcome to my childhood. <laughs> Why do you think I kept my Why do you think I kept my room so clean? No, it wasn't abuse. It was love. No, no, it was love. He he was probably the best. Never put his hand on me. The guy, best guy I ever worked greatest, for. Greatest greatest guy in the world and uh, kind, thank generous. Thank you for uh, keeping uh, his spirit alive and all that you're doing. Oh, man. And uh, we are excited to do. How many of you would like to see a lesson <laughs> with Terry showing you exactly how he does this? Um, it's in the works. Yep. If you'd like to. 
uh, for us to do that, just say, yes, we want Terry. <laughs> Type it in the comments, um, and we will arrange a tutorial with Terry. It's already in the works no matter what you say. Yeah, um, if you say no, we're still... say no, <laughs> we're going to do it to spite you. Uh, we'll do um, two. We'll do two. That's in fact... And we'll rename the school the Terry Wolfinger yeah. School. The Wolfinger. <laughs> just the Wolfinger. Just ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Stan Winston Sorry. School is now just Wolfinger. <laughs> well, your dad is like, no. Lady, <laughs> the lady. He'd love now. It. Just for a week. Yeah, um, for a week. Well, thanks again for coming by. Hey, thanks and, so uh, much. We're, we're uh, looking forward to working with you, and ah, your work too. is gorgeous. Thank you, sir. Of course. And this man is the father of a new young son, four months old. Yep. So, yep. applause so. for that, too. <laughs> Thank uh, you. You are potent. Uh, all right. <laughs> More ways than one. <laughs> always. There's always all right. Uh, well, great to see you, too. Oh, yeah, it's great to see you, too, man. Um, and we're going to bring so in our final guest very shortly. Thank you so Brothers. much. Of course. Of course, dude. So um, just, This will be... Uh, why don't you walk yeah. over to uh, Chris? He'll take off your headset, and this will be uploaded on our YouTube channel oh, awesome. in a few hours. Awesome! So if awesome. you go to Stan Winston School YouTube channel, you'll see a live replay right there. Great. And we have Stephen Kyoto. Oh. We're gonna have all of them. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, we're going out strong with the Kyoto brothers. Uh, the, the, we couldn't pick a better closing act. We got Charlie, Ed, and Stephen coming over. <laughs> hey man, how you doing? I'm there? good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry, Edward can't be here. Oh, is it today? just you and Charlie? Okay, yeah, that's fine. We'll take it. Um, and we're gonna put this one on Charlie. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And uh, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Killer Clowns from Outer right Space. Oh my God! Hello, hang on, sir. hang on. Not, not uh, right. We're, we're, and these guys uh, put together some cool stuff, and uh, let's let you talk about it. Charlie, I'm gonna give you my headset. I mean, uh, okay. here we go. So is this, this thing live? This thing is live. You are live around the world yeah. right now. Um, How do you put this thing on? Uh, that's it. All right. That's it. Hold on. Let me, get, let me help you out. It's just like this, like this. Oh, on the back. Like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. You won't even know it's there. So tell us why Old you're here. School. Tell us why you're here, guys. Oh, well, we're really happy to, we're really happy to be here at Monster Palooza, son of Monster Palooza, because uh, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of our Killer Class Matter Space film. And it's been a blast. Yes, Yes, we are. <laughs> That's right. He's just confirming it. Uh, and so and we're really amazed that after 25 years that there still is an audience out there for our film that is still loving it and sharing it with their kids. So no, it's great. Three generations now are being introduced to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We love the creativity and stuff. We see what they've done with clowns. We started something, and now it's going to the next level, and the next level is terrific. Who knows where it's going to go? Yeah, 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 so. And then what else? I mean, the guys wanted to talk about what we're up to. Yes, yes, and first, to tell everyone your links. Uh, where they can find you on Facebook, website, any of that stuff, so they can check you well, out. We have our KyotoBrothers.com, Kyoto Brothers website, and then we all are on Facebook. We have Kyoto Brothers website, and the three individuals, Edward Kyoto, Charlie Kyoto, Steve Kyoto. Yeah, that's right. And I just joined Instagram. I'm still trying to figure it out. I just got a smartphone, so you can catch me at SJ Kyoto and see what kind of funny stuff we were doing over there. Nah, I don't have a smartphone. No, he's got the dumb phone. I have the, phone. the yeah, phones. I have the flip phones. You know, and then the cover keeps coming off. What the, what the, the hell? Fuck the, the, what is this? What, what? what do they pay you at Kyoto Brothers? Operator, he doesn't have enough operator, money to even buy operator. a phone. What the? <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna, we got some questions coming in for you, and I'm going to shout them out. All right. Uh, you, you ask us stupid questions, we'll give you stupid answers. And Kyoto's are insane in a great way. Uh, that's, that's a comment from Killer Clowns. Uh, everyone's going crazy for you. Uh, Kyoto Brothers, I love you guys. That's from Stephen Oh, Bruno. Tim Bruno sounds like Italian. Are you from Italy? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, wait, where's Sicilian? Uh, At the, 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 the southern end there. And we got uh, ML says, I love the work of the brothers, mostly for their stop motion. Oh, well, yeah, we love stop motion. Watching work like killer clowns just makes me all warm inside. Oh. It makes us warm inside to hear that. We're not doing as much stop motion as we should be doing. There's some great stuff being done, and there's stuff still that we have to do. There's a lot of stop motion that we have in, in mind, especially... Oh, yeah, you guys, pick this up the holiday here. Alien Christmas, soon to be... <laughs> Soon to be a stop motion feature. Get this. Imagine you got the weirdest, you got the most evil pirates, space pirates, trying to steal Earth's gravity. And where do they land? At the North Pole. So Santa and the elves are the front line, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the front line 
of defense. Uh, you have def the alien race that all they do is take. And you have Christmas where all they do is give. So you have give versus take, polar opposites at battle with each other at the North Pole. It's going to be a stop motion extravaganza brought to you by the Kyoto Brothers. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And what else are we doing? Oh, yeah. We got so many interesting products. One thing I really want to announce is those guys at Bizarro Gogo. Sig, Sig Neutron and Randy Rodil, we just formed a partnership on a project we call Channel 8 from Outer Space. It's an amalgamation, like an independent TV station out in outer space, pulling together all this uh, different entertainment from all over the universe in one big mashup. So it's going to be like fractured flickers type TV show. And let's say, imagine seeing movie trailers from the planet Uranus or something from the stupid, uh, the, the Dumbbell Nebula. Imagine a uh, space exercise show like this. Get this out of Exercise from the, through the wormhole here. This one, did this kid, did this uh, Am I, are we live here? here? No, no, but you can hear what she's got to say. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four. You work it. Work those abs. Work those abs. We had Jack LaLanne. Now we have this. Oh, I feel the burn. I feel the burn. Yeah, so sick. And pretty Come soon you'll all feel the burn. So we have the beautiful Randy Rodil and Sig Neutron. Ah. A real powerful combination. What we're going to be doing soon in a couple of months, we're going to be going into crowdfunding and we're going to be kind of launching this, this enterprise. And it's going to be a kind of viral thing where as we create the wraparound content with this uh, intergalactic TV station, we're going to be soliciting um, content from everybody, from every planet in the universe to kind of add to our repertoire. Uh, this is I'm excited, are you? Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so and if you're not excited, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's just some of the things we're doing. Uh, guys, your clowns are amazing. Honk, honk. That's from Killian Gonzalez. Oh, well, honk, honk back. Ron Cole says thank you guys for all you do to keep Stop Motion alive. Hey, same to you, Ron. Shout out to you and all the beautiful work you do in Stop Motion. Hey, this Kyle, works. Kyle Parker says still love killer clowns. It was a staple around this time. I'll train Ron Cole. I'll bring Ringling Brothers. Love all the good. Oh, well. well. You know what? The clowns inspired us. You know, we grew up with clowns, Ringling Brothers, well, you know, and, and all that stuff. We're basically bringing back, we're just putting a little Keanu Brothers twist on it. Yes, and for all you people out there who are interested, always talking about the sequel for Killer Clowns. Killer Clowns 2, you're waiting for it? I'm going to clue you in. We're not going to do a sequel. No Killer Clowns 2. Instead, we're going to do Killer Clowns 3. We're going <laughs> to skip 2 altogether. <laughs> we'll do Killer Clowns 3 first, and then we'll bring back 2 as a lost episode. Yeah. Oh, Kent Burton. Yeah, well, Ron, I will say a shout out to Kent Burton, an old animation, animated friend of mine, stop motion guy, uh, brilliant animator, and uh, you'll see more of his work. Yeah, and Justin Cohn and, and Kim Blanchett. These guys go back with us, you know, 20 years, 30 years. We started with uh, I Go Pogo, and they're still with us. They're doing state-of-the-art stuff. They're the best uh, stop motion animators we know. And if you're wondering why we're yelling, it's because we're from New York. We're from New York. We talk this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Why is she sleeping? Yeah, it's what, what time is it? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. And, no. Uh, and also, uh, Red Clark says he got to spend the day with these guys. And they put hey, hold this. Like All right. Let's do. Let's do. <laughs> hey, Charlie, you got this. <laughs> We're getting tangled up here. <laughs> oh. Work that body. Work that. Right, okay. Down. Go down. And up, right. down, and up. This is Jack LaLanne speaking. You know, just a, this is how you stay fit, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. All right, I feel fit. I feel fit. I'm exhausted. I feel fit. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, everyone, everyone is shouting amazing things, and uh, we love these guys. One of the things that's been asked is, when are we going to do a Kyoto Brothers lesson for Stan Winston School? Uh, 2014? Yeah, 2014. We'll figure out something. This we can teach you a lesson. Just depends on what you want to learn. So shout, put in the comments, what do you want to learn from these guys? That'll help us have a starting point. Uh, that's it, exactly. There's so many things that we would like to do with you guys. You let, let us know what you'd like to hear from us. Uh, and once again, give us all your links, what, where they can find you. Okay, you can find us at kyotobros.com.
That's BROS.com. And individually on Facebook, it's uh, S. Kyoto on Facebook. And C. Kyoto, uh, Charles Kyoto. And you know, if you want to email us, you can drop us a line at ckyoto at kyotobros.com, S. Kyoto at kyotobros.com, and E. Kyoto at kyotobros.com. We love to hear from you. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll respond. We'll send you some stuff. We'll send you some little uh, you know, stuff that no one's ever seen before. And that's the stuff we love to share. You know, give you a little stuff. You know what? In the, in the 30 years we've been in business, we're excited about the stuff we were able to do, but the disappointment is there's still so much stuff left undone, and we want to do that, and we want to show you, you know, the stuff that you haven't seen yet. And yeah. let's give a final plug for the book, too. Come on, zoom in tight on that, Jake. Available on Amazon. Yeah. Check it out. Alien Christmas. Alien Christmas. I can't think of a better Christmas than an Alien Christmas. Neither can I. <laughs> And the stop motion roots is Rankin Bass, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We need our stop motion to maybe go back to Christmas. The perfect Christmas special, the perfect Christmas feature. And we have a Ray Harryhausen introduction. Yeah, let's take a little... Oh, Ray Harryhausen introduction? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ray Harryhausen and Ray Bradbury, you know, uh, gave, a, gave their Ray endorsement. Bradbury, the yeah. Rays? Yeah, the yeah, Rays. Got the, Rays. Got the two Rays. It's a great story about the most evil aliens on the planet coming to Earth to steal Earth's gravity. And they land at the North Pole, so Santa and the elves are the first line of defense against an alien invasion. Don't give away the ending. Yeah. Oh, I, I won't. Don't tell me, don't finishes. tell me, don't tell me. Actually, we also have a feature that's in the, in the process called uh, uh, Guido Columbus, the Italian Odyssey. It's about the younger brother of uh, Christopher Columbus who gets duped into proving the world is flat and does. <laughs> well, it's a true thank, story. Thank you guys. You guys are... Uh, two of, uh, three of our favorite guys. We really loved covering yeah. your beautiful uh, Parasaurolophus. That's it. Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. We call Barbara we call her Lily, and she can be seen with her with her friend Duncan up at the Santa Barbara Zoo. Yes. So check that out uh, and everything these guys are up to. And uh, thank you guys for bringing your awesome energy over. Here. Oh, well, thanks for asking us yes, so hey, much. Matt, it's always a pleasure. This is great. And visit the Stan Winston School. You'll learn a lot. The Stan right. Winston School. I wish they had Stan Winston School when I was a kid. It wouldn't have been so hard. I'd have learned the hard knocks. They didn't have television when he was a kid. Yeah. They didn't have electricity. <laughs> Again, let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All so, right, you. good. Did I say anything stupid? No. <laughs> the, the free gift. That's free. That's free. Go ahead, Steve. That's for you. Thank you, guys. you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Get this. I, no, that's, got my is, that's for you. We got a free book. Thank you. I'm taking this home to my. I'm gonna read it to my daughter tonight. Um, guys, we've come to the bitter end. Uh, this has been, uh, gosh, an incredible weekend here at Sun and Monster Palooza, and it's time to wrap it up. Uh, we have had a constant stream of brilliant monster makers here. The interaction has been incredible. I know there are a couple of you who have been with us not only for the last two days, but with us at YouTube during those live broadcasts. And thank you for your incredible comments and keeping this uh, such a cool interactive experience. It's amazing. I mean, we're here at this convention and we're also with you. It's uh, kind of exciting. So thank you. First of all, we need to thank all the people who made this possible. Uh, it takes a, a big group of people and a lot of attention to detail to launch a live broadcast like this. So let's go around the room. I'm Matt Winston. Let's just head around that way. Let's go clockwise. Um, we're going to come around. Come on in, guys. We want to meet everyone. Come on in. Come on in. Just come close. Uh, we're going to start around this way. We're going to see... Oh, Chris is going to come in. That's even easier. We'll start with David Sanger. You're right there. This is David Sanger, lead content producer and a little camera shy. Destroyer of Mirth. Uh, on the left, hold on, Johnny. John Ailes there. Uh, if you like the look of Stan Winston School, you have this man to thank for it. John Ailes, creative director. Uh, we have newer team member Chris Vaughn, who has been instrumental in helping us with the live initiative. Uh, we have our uh, intern for the month, Lauren Shell, who is we met out in Virginia, who's heading back tomorrow. Boo hoo! Uh, we have sales mistress Bonnie. And we also have Teresa back there. We have Eric back here, Eric Lidoff, co-founder. Eric Lidoff over here, who does all the hard stuff that it takes to run this company. Uh, my partner in crime and uh, 
co-founder of the school and man in camera right there is Jake Borowski. Show yourself, Jake. Uh, and, and really it couldn't be done without everyone on it. Everyone on camera and sound and most of all, thanks to all the artists who join us today and thanks to Elliot Brodsky for throwing this great event twice a year and thanks to all of you for bringing your fun to this. It would not have been fun without you and we hope we see a bunch of you Tuesday morning, 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. We're going to have a free uh, sculpting webinar with Don Lanning. Uh, so just go to our site, click on webinars, and click on his upcoming webinar, and you'll see a place there where you can click to register for the live preview webinar. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to get to meet you guys. We're going to bring you up on screen. So we hope to see you there on Tuesday. That's all I got to say. From Son of Monster Palooza, you're in the Stan Winston School Booth. I am Matt Winston, and thank you for joining us. We will see you next time. I'm not talking anymore. I'm done. Jeez. <laughs> you can do a filibuster. You want to go to Congress? Yeah. You want to go?